believe I've made it all the way to the top four in this competition. My plates used to look like they came out of a little country kitchen, and now they look like they're coming out of five-star restaurant. Come on down, guys. All right. As a DJ, my food dream is to combine my two passions, high-end dining and high-energy music, to give people the time of their lives in my restaurant. Welcome back. I thought I was going to retire at the bank, and now my dreams are right within reach. This is amazing. Congratulations. You have all made it to the top four of the biggest cooking competition in the entire world. I've been fortunate to have a very successful career in poker, so I'm not here for the $250,000. I'm here for that MasterChef title. Listen carefully. Tonight, we have some very, very special guests joining us for dinner inside the amazing MasterChef restaurants. Guests that, when they come to any of our restaurants, they terrify us. That's right, even me. <laughs> Tonight, you'll be cooking for some of America's most powerful, most intimidating, most influential food critics. Tonight's food critics, they come from the heavy hitters. New York Magazine, Wall Street Journal, The Washington Post, Vogue. And if you thought we were tough on you, our opinions will seem like a bedtime story compared to how these critics will review your dishes. Wow. But you won't be in it alone because you'll be cooking in two teams of two. Brandy, because you won the last challenge, you now get the crucial advantage of picking your teammate. I'm gonna stand over here, please. I know that if my team loses, whoever I pick, I'm probably going to be facing this person in the pressure test. I could give myself an awesome advantage right now, or I could stab myself in the foot with my choice. I want someone that's strong. I want someone who knows flavors, who knows plating. I want someone who's gonna help me make a phenomenal dish. So I'm choosing Sean. Wow. Yeah. Please, step up and pick up your aprons. I've seen David upset in this MasterChef kitchen more times than I want to. I can't let that happen tonight, because if he loses his cool, one of us will go home. Tonight, we will have 17 of America's most powerful food critics. And in your teams of two, you'll have 90 minutes to prep and cook a stunning, restaurant-quality entree for all of them. Then each critic will write a brief review of each team's dish. Seriously, if they're all coming into my restaurant this evening, trust me, I'll be crapping myself. <laughs> now, at your stations, you'll find two identical boxes of ingredients that we personally selected for you to work with tonight. Are you all ready? Let's do this. Because your 90 minutes starts now. Let's go, let's go. Ooh, let's see what's in this okay. box. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, man. Oh, we've got some beautiful proteins in here. I see some duck, I see some lamb, I see some halibut. This halibut looks really nice. Yeah, I like the halibut, too. Is there something we can crust it in? Hazelnuts. I love duck. Duck, to me, is like the pork of the sky. Yeah, that skin has got to be on point. I'm liking this purple cauliflower, too. Like, that it would... It adds so much color. Yeah. There's purple asparagus. Yeah, let's do, like, a little study in purple. I see my favorite polenta. We... Let's do a polenta cake instead no, of that we have to do it elegant. Yeah, we don't want a, yeah. a mush on a plate. A really take nice... It, like, a nice polenta cake. Okay. Parsnip puree, cauliflower puree. That'll be beautiful. It's gonna be, be so bright on a plate. You ready? Red team. Let's, let's rock this, this thing. Woo! Five minutes gone. Start working out your timing and making sure the execution is perfect. Let's do this. You get that reduction started, I'm gonna get started on the polenta. I'm gonna do both cauliflower at the same time. Good, good, good. That'll save time. Wow. The most daunting challenge every table in there tonight is a critic. You know, we always say in the restaurant, treat sure. every plate like it's food critic. Yep. Tonight, that's literally the case. Can you imagine food critics loving this dish? That's it. That means we made it. They can fill your restaurant up for six years, or they can shut your restaurant down in six months. Both boxes have the identical ingredients, but there's two proteins there that I would give my right arm to cook. Does it nice? Yes, they do. The lamb and the duck. Uh-uh. Seriously? Mm -mm. No. 
I'm coating the fish in hazelnut right now. Sounds good. I would go anywhere near that halibut. The most unforgiving fish anywhere in the sea. Beautiful. Listen, I know I what it. a risk halibut is, but I think a beautifully done halibut will speak volumes. Richard, what would you choose? What would you go for? Yeah, listen, I think I would grab, quite honestly, the rack of lamb. The duck is challenging because a lot of young or novice cooks, they undercook duck. Yeah. David, how's the duck looking? Yeah, I got to regulate this temperature. Make sure you get that duck skin so incredibly crispy. Low and slow, baby, low and slow. 35 minutes gone, 55 minutes remaining, guys. Let's go. Granny, I think I'm good on this. Yeah, that's more good. I'm killing my time on these cranberries. All right, cauliflower's in. This polenta cooking liquid has got to come to a boil. Sounds like you're moving fast. Almost done with these Brussels sprouts. Whew. I'm about to start on my purple puree. The duck is rendering nicely. Red team, blue team, whatever you do, don't look up on the balcony. Our food critics are now arriving. Wow, wow, wow. Jeffrey Steingarten from Vogue. Holy s***. Brett Cracklow from the Wall Street Journal. Eddie Lynn from the Los Angeles Times. Insanity. These food critics are spread out across the whole balcony. Focus, Nori. Don't let it get you out of your zone, though. Crap. This is a big deal. Adam Platt from New York Magazine. Larry Olmsted from USA Today and Forbes. Stephanie Corden from the Huffington Post. Leslie Souter from LA Magazine. Tim Carmen from the Washington Post. Bethany Jean Clement from the Seattle Times. These critics are stone cold killers. That is any restaurant's nightmare up there. Whew. I feel the eyes watching. I can just feel their death stares glaring at me, watching every single move I make and waiting for me to make a mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute honor and a pleasure to have such esteemed critics here with us today. Would you kindly all make your way through to the MasterChef restaurant, please. Your table awaits you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on, seriously. Hey, listen, one's bad enough. 17, there is a bit of good news to this this evening. Every other restaurant in the country has got nothing else to worry about except the MasterChef restaurants. I'm really excited about this home cooking. People have written for years about how home cooking is dead. And now we see MasterChef kind of I'm reviving it. I've reviewed all types of restaurants, fine dining, casual, hole in the wall spots, but this is Master Chef. On top of that, we're down to the final four. So the food better be four times as good. 35 minutes to go, guys. Ramp it up now. Start speeding up, guys, please. Right, Brandy. Yes, Chef. Our critics are in the dining room. Yeah. They are waiting for magic to happen. They're going to get magic tonight. They're going to get yes, magic? I'm super confident. Right, Sean, tell me about the dish. Hazelnut crusted halibut. Halibut. Yeah. Why? Lamb, duck. If Why we halibut? Get, if we get halibut right, it's going to be beautiful, and these guys are going to go crazy for it. OK, fine, but it's a tough fish to pull off. We're not going to get it wrong, chef. Talk me through the rest of the dish. We're going to do a Meyer lemon beurre blanc. We're going to do a play on purple with some purple microgreens, some purple asparagus. A play on purple. It's going to be delicious. And we got a, a purple puree coming out, too. It's a, it's, it's a restaurant full of critics, not a kindergarten. Absolutely. Why, and it's going to no be play on purple. It's going to be beautiful. You tell us to take risks, and this is a I, risk. If but, we can nail it, then. Yeah, but not right now. When? When then? If I don't take risks right now, when am I going to do it? Young lady, are you crazy? Oh, I'm a little crazy. This you competition's are, you? made me a little crazy. Yeah. Really? I, I don't want to bring it. You know, you all tell us to take risks. Yeah, get him, Brandy. If it's one night, just keep it safe and delicious and simple. It would be tonight. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. These critics are going to know my name when they leave here tonight. Right. Good luck. All right, Tenoria. Yes, chef. What do you got going on? We are making a pan-seared rasa hanout duck. Rasa hanout. Okay. With a uh, Brussels sprout salad with a beautiful vinaigrette, polenta cake, as well as a pomegranate molasses port reduction. Here's the thing about rasa hanout, Tenoria. I hate to tell you this. Mm -hmm. It's perfect with duck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, you get me every time. Oh, Shame it's on a, you. What does a girl from Tennessee know about polenta, though? Come you on. You know what? This girl knows her grits. I know polenta, I know cream and butter, and it's all up in there tonight. how to get some duck Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited to have duck fat tonight. Duck, it's a tricky protein to cook. It is. It's 
especially for 17 very finicky food critics. Our goal tonight is to show off how well it's cooked. So when they see it on the plate, they're going to see that it's beautifully cooked. They're not going to have to wait until they cut into it. Okay? Good Thank luck. you. It smells incredible. I've never seen such great coordination between both say, teams. They're working like professional chefs right there. They don't sound like home cooks. No, no they exactly right. Mm. Good. Miss Mide, I love you. Yes. Blue team, their halibut is still out on their bench. They're going to plate half the ingredients and then cook with fish, put the rest of the ingredients on, and fish goes on last. This is a dangerous game, guys. I mean, they have to cook the fish at the last second, so. Last second. That's just the nature of cooking fish. Perfection! Red team, they have a critic dream dish, a duck dish, because the critics know how hard that is to pull off. Duck is rendering nicely. Wonderful. You know what I love about the sound of the red team's dish? It feels like them. It feels homey like Tenoria. Yep. It feels elegant like David. I think it's going to be stunning. Guys, come up to 15 minutes to go. Yes, chef. Start. Executing your plates, please. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. Is it time to drop the cranberries? We've got to get those cranberries in there. All right. Everything okay where they were plating? Yeah, looking beautiful. David, I really need my sauce, hun. Needs to reduce a tad bit more. David, it's gotta go fast. Yep, I'm gonna put it on high. Just gotta make sure we nail that duck. Okay, Come on, Brandy. Get that I'm sauce going, over going, here. Going. Brandy and Sean, they started to put things down on the blue team's dishes right now. The red team, they still have more things they need to do. They need to sear the cake. They need to slice the duck. David, give me an ETA on the duck. What's the rest time? What's the slice time? First ones will be ready to get sliced, and they're all staggered. So by the time I slice them, they'll all be coming ready. I got them in order. I'm worried that the red team is underestimating what they can accomplish in these last 10 minutes. Uh, that one's a little raw. Correct it, David. OK, where's the cauliflower? The cauliflower. Get, okay. get the purees on. Oh, my gosh. Not tonight. David, how's it going back there with the duck? Uh, Guys, you have eight minutes to go. How many are completed, David? They're all a little under. He said them too hot a pan, so they're all rare in the middle. I have no idea what the f is happening. Man, not tonight. Just calm down. It's raw. Oh, it's nightmare. We are so. Raw. Just calm down. Uh, no idea what the f is happening. It's five minutes to go. There's no way they're gonna get deplaced at any time. That's a nightmare. David, chill out, dude. This one might be a little underdone too. The rest of these feel pretty good, David. Wow. Uh -huh. I've got quite a few good ones. We just need to recover on those other ones. Three minutes remaining. Blue team, you've got to get your halibut on the plate. Yes, Brandy, bring it. I'm bringing it right now. Here we come. Oh, my God. Oh. Right behind you with the sauce, David. How's the duck looking? The duck looks good. The good. ones you got. Keep going faster. Go faster. If they don't move their ass, at this rate, there'll be food critics without dishes to critique. One minute, guys. Let's go. Finish your plate. What's up, Randy? I got to get in here. OK. Here, try me. All right, David, I'm going with almonds. You go behind me and clean plates. You got it. Come on, guys, please. Finishing touches now. Here we go. 10, 9, nine. Eight, seven, seven, six, five, four, four three, two, one. Stop. Well done. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, Brandy Mud. We did it. Oh, you're good. Oh, it's you're the duck. good. The duck. You almost went there, but I would have knocked you out if you did. So we're good. Well done, guys. Waiters, please. They look as good as we could ask for. I'm pumped up about this dish. It looks spectacular. I can't believe they we pulled beautiful. that one off. The flavor of the sauce is beautiful. The halibut is cooked perfectly, and those little dots of white and purple puree are probably the sexiest thing I've ever seen on a plate. Thank you. Delicious. It's more like home cooking to me. Very spring. I know, very springy. Yes, it's beautiful. Pretty good, actually. I agree. David and I did a really great job working together, and we put out a beautiful, colorful, flavorful plate. I would absolutely order this off a menu in a fine dining restaurant. Chef Ramsay, stick this on your menu. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the MasterChef restaurant. I don't think across 25 years of cooking, I've ever welcomed one critic in let alone 17. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'd like to introduce you to our home cooks for the evening. 
Please welcome the red team and the blue team. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, these critics are intimidating and they're powerful and I want to impress them, but if anything, I'm honored and humbled right now to be standing in front of people that can pick my food apart. Red Team, Snoria, David, please describe your dish to the food critics. Today we have for you a pan-seared duck finished with Roswell Anout, a Brussels sprout slaw with a grainy mustard vinaigrette, a crispy polenta cake finished with a pomegranate molasses pork reduction. And the Blue Team. We have for you a hazelnut crusted halibut on top of a Meyer lemon beurre blanc. And then beside it, we have a play on purple. We have a parsnip celery root brown butter puree, a purple cauliflower puree, and asparagus peels marinated in a Meyer lemon vinaigrette. To our guests of honor as you dine, please gather your thoughts on the note cards that we've laid in front of you. Once we've had a chance to read all of your reviews, we will decide on a winning team tonight. Red team, blue team, head on back into the MasterChef kitchen and clean up. Our esteemed critics, bon appetit, please. Enjoy. Thank you. That's a little scary. Yeah, no smiles whatsoever. Yeah, there's nothing going to charm them to victory. We definitely killed that. I mean, we got our plates pretty much as close as we could get them to the way we wanted them. Right. Let's start off with the blue team's halibut. Let's see. Got here. Got a nice crisp cut there. It's beautiful. Just the way you want it. Wow. I think the fish is cooked. Beautifully. It needs a touch more seasoning. Hazelnuts are delicious, but there's a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, I think the proportions are off a little bit. More yep. sauce, more cauliflower. It's me just to see what the critics think. The blue team's halibut was a little overcooked, but I love the crust. I love the little salad. It's actually a fancy to the point of prissiness. It had just a hint of the beurre blanc, which was done with such restraint that it really enchanted the fish rather than overwhelming it. It's really easy to screw up a fish like that, so I'm actually impressed that they were able to do um, as well as they did with a fish that steaky. The purple white dollops belong on a nine-year-old's birthday cake, and it didn't make sense. Now, red team's duck. Now, that duck was set up for success. The problem they've got there, it needs another four or five minutes in the oven. We'll take the end of the duck there. Mm. I have to say, for what they lacked in execution, they made up for in the concept of flavor profile. Yeah. I love what they did with the blender. I love the fact that they laced it with duck fat. That's a very shabby thing to do. I just wish that they'd cooked that duck four or five minutes longer, and I'm hoping our critics haven't got raw duck. I love the fact that the duck was rare and decadent and sexy. Could they, had they jazzed up the season, perhaps a little bit. But I have to say, this plate all came together very nicely. I feel like I've seen a dish like this many times. Um, the dish completely lacks soul. The duck breasts are seasoned well. And the fat was rendered well. My main complaint is that they used a pomegranate sauce on it, which is out of season. Overall, I actually thought the most flavorful thing on the plate was the polenta cake. But I wanted these supporting components to come together and do something with the protein, but it felt more like I was just eating a big, maybe slightly under-seasoned hunks of duck. I still think it's two very strong efforts. I think it's and still either team's game yeah. at this point. Tonight, sadly, there can only be one winning team. Can't wait to study those reviews and then come to a consensus and nominate our winning team based on your feedback. Once again, a sincere thank you. Thank you, Madame. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nice. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to serve you. Well, I voted for you guys. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The uh, polenta cake was delicious. Thank That's her specialty. Thank you. Jeffrey. Did you find that was in it? Jeffrey. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. She's not single. Yes, I am. <laughs> All of you, please follow us into the MasterChef kitchen. I am so full of anxiety right now. We just had 17 food critics taste our food. We've never been under this type of scrutiny before. So whoever wins deserves a spot in the top three. Home Cooks, both teams did a remarkable job tonight. But unfortunately, there can only be one winning team. Before we announce the winning team, 
we have some very big news to share. For the first time in MasterChef history, in this year's finale, there will be three home cooks. Oh, oh man. man. For the first time in MasterChef history, in this year's finale, there will be three home cooks. Oh, oh nice. man. Oh, God. One team won't just be safe tonight. They will be guaranteed a place in next week's MasterChef three-way finale. Sad news is, of course, that the other team is going to have to fight it out head to head for that final spot. Tonight's winning team, uh -huh. the team that is officially in the MasterChef finale, is the blue team. Uh -huh. Brandy, Sean. Oh my god. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Brandy, how are you feeling? I don't even know what to feel right now. I'm, when I came into this, I never in a million years thought that I would be going to the finale. And I'm so proud of myself, and I'm so proud that my students and my kids get to see this, that, you know, dreams come true. Sean, how'd you feel? I'm so proud right now. Um, <clears throat> I wish my dad was still here with me. I did this for him and my mom. That performance was legendary. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. So, Blue Team, Sean and Brandy, congratulations. Please head on up to the balcony. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> David Tenorio, you were defeated very narrowly tonight. The critics loved the idea, the concept of the dish, but the quantity of sauce, the cook on some of the duck, not all of the duck, those were just the little details that set you back and gave the blue team the edge tonight. Before we go any further, you each need one of these. It's David's fault we're in this pressure test. David's main responsibility was duck. I mean, it hurts bad. In this difficult pressure test, you'll be cooking with the most widely eaten meat in the world. And you'll be taking this phenomenal protein to a MasterChef level. Not once, not twice, but three times. You're going to have to replicate three of our favorite dishes revolving around a classic protein that every chef loves to work with. Juicy, flavorful pork. Underneath this cloche is the cut of pork that I absolutely love. Pork tenderloin. Here we have my harissa spice pork tenderloin with charred eggplant puree, zucchini ribbons, olive petals, and a beautiful herb salad. There is one cut of pork that chefs like me love more than any other because it's a money maker. Pork belly. My signature preparation of pork is braised pork belly with creamed onion, roasted fennel, butternut squash, and date and orange relish. I think there is one cut of pork unlike any other. A stunning double cut pork chop. Looks good. Now, here we have my shiny five spice grilled pork chop sat on a bed of bok choy with sauteed Okinawa potatoes, pickled shiitake, and lightly dusted with that Togarashi Spice Lotus Chips. The technique on this pork chop needs to be executed perfectly, or your dish will be a travesty. Wow. All right. You will have just 75 minutes to complete all three of our signature pork dishes. The finale is this close. <laughs> Please head to your stations. I'm pissed right now because I feel like it's my fault that we're both down here. Now, me, someone I have respect for and view as a friend, have to battle because of my shortcomings. At your stations, you'll find all the ingredients you need to make our three intricate pork dishes. Sean and Brandy, final words of encouragement or good luck? Have fun. Have fun? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? It's fun down there.
Right, David Sonoria, your 75 minutes starts now. Here we go. So, three difficult dishes across 75 minutes. This is a tough one to pull off. So let's talk about ideal timing. So the first thing you do, pork belly. Into yes. the pressure cooker, and get it going. After that, get that pork chop seared, rendered, and cook just above rare, so you can reheat it with literally 10 minutes to go. And then we'll be cooking your tenderloin right at the very last minute, not too early, because that can't sit and hang around. No, it goes absolutely. too dry. Now. My pork tenderloin, it's a lean cut of meat. It's not very forgiving. Got to cook it to a medium, medium rare. And they shouldn't really touch that pork tenderloin until they've got 35 minutes to go. But they need to try the heck out of that eggplant to get that nice smokiness. And the zucchini should just kiss that saute pan. You don't want them to wilt. Our beef stock reducing. So, Christina, your dish is like a ballet, right? <laughs> I mean, it's there's so much finesse involved. Mine's more like a rock show. Pork belly has to cook at least 30 minutes under pressure. You want the melting fat of the pork belly and then this crisp exterior. If it's not cooked, it's going to be rubbery and chewy. My double cut pork chop needs serious attention to detail. Jeffy there is rendering that fat down on the back and making sure you've got that wonderful temperature running from the beginning right through to the bone. It needs to be medium, not rare. Less than 50 minutes remaining. OK, David, how are you feeling? What? Why? I don't like to fail and I don't like to lose. You're not going to throw the towel in now. No, I'm not going to throw the towel in. I'm just going to do my best. Well, start believing yourself a little bit more. Can you do this? Yes, sir. Top four. Top four is not good enough. Well, there you go. That's the David I want to hear. You get your head out of your arms and start coming back a little bit. Yes, chef. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Let's go. Barney, baby, David's back. All right, Tenoria, how are you feeling? I feel composed right now. I you look to... organized. I, that, that's really, really important. I don't want to forget anything. How confident are you that you can beat David? I have no choice but to be confident. If I wasn't confident, I would curl up in the fetal position and hide <laughs> under my station, and that's not happening today. It cannot happen. <laughs> can, can you beat him? You know, David is really, really strong, but I think I'm a little bit more focused than David, and that might be what puts me over the edge. Less than 30 minutes to go. I think we're getting a visitor. Wow. Uh, brilliant job. Thank you, Chef. Now, there's one more that's going to be joining you. Which one do you want, Tenori or David? David. I forgot that was hot. I think he's going to be easier to beat in the finale because his emotions get the best of him, like they're doing right now. That's great news. Beef stock just turned to syrup. Mm. Sean? I'd rather Tenori. Mm. That's good. I don't think she'll take enough risks to be able to pull it off. No, I think she's going to stay right in her comfort zone. I feel really good about that. And you know, I said from day one, I want to be the top Vegas guy, so the earlier Davis can go, the day we can go there. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Less than 20 minutes to go, guys. Where's Tenorio's pork tenderloin? Davis got his pork tenderloin in the pan. Tenorio's is still out there, untouched. She's going to cook that pork tenderloin. Tenderloin. It looks like the pork tenderloin is not even on the map right now. Does she even see it? I don't know what the hell Tenori is doing. Her pork tenderloin is just sitting there raw. She hasn't even heated up a damn pan for it yet. What is she doing? If she doesn't get this thing cooking right now, David's taking this one and joining me and Brandy in the finale. Tenori. Less than 20 minutes to go, guys. Three stunning pork dishes. But just one spot remaining in the grand finale. Make sure it's you. Guys, I think Tenoria has forgotten about her pork tenderloin. Tenderloin. It looks like the pork tenderloin is not even on the map right now. She's gonna cook that pork tenderloin. I don't know if Tenoria doesn't know where her tenderloin is or she's forgot she has to make a tenderloin. But it needs to rest for at least 15 minutes, and she only has 15 minutes left, and she hasn't started cooking it. She's going to be completely screwed on this meat. Finally. Don't just stand there. She's just standing there. She's just standing there holding the pork. 12 minutes remaining. Tenori's pork chop, I worry, is undercooked. What the hell happened to this guy? 
David Small Billy doesn't like his cup properly. Six minutes, guys. Let's go. Come on. Get plating. David's pork chops out of the oven. Great seal on it. Let's get it on. Three minutes, guys. Here, Here we go. go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go, Tenora. Come on. Tenora's ten on the floor. Tenora, you've got nothing down in the front. I need to see some food. Come on, Tenora, push to the end. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And stop. Hands in the air. Good job, guys. Yeah. Well done. Going to be interesting. Tenoria and David, it's time to taste all three of your pork dishes. I'm going to start with the tenderloin. As a whole, Tenoria's pork tenderloin dish looks better, but her pork tenderloin is way wrong. Hopefully, the judges value that over some garnish. Tenoria, what do you think of your dish? I think it looks great. I'm a little concerned about the cook of the pork. The temp is a little bit under, maybe. Okay. How'd you season this tenderloin? Um, I rubbed it in the harissa and a little bit of salt. David, how do you feel your pork tenderloin dish came out? Uh, the dish is missing the eggplant puree and the, uh, the garnish, the chive, and the, the other herbs. Other than that, I'm happy with the rest of the dish. The cook, I think, is exactly where I wanted it to be. Noria, if these two dishes landed in front of you at a restaurant, which would you prefer? I would not be as appetized for David's. It doesn't look like it's a dish that I'm excited to eat. And I'm not really excited about raw pork. Noria's is undercooked. She admittedly has a more beautiful dish, but David's pork tenderloin is cooked to perfection. All right, so next up, the pork belly dishes. OK, so visually, David, give me your assessment, one plate versus the other. I think they're very close and similar. Uh, I believe in color, my pork looks a little more appetizing. But mine is obviously missing the date relish. Tanuri, what do you think about David missing a couple elements? I mean, you really need sweetness from the date relish to cut the fattiness of the pork. So it should be disappointing to him and maybe for your bite. All right, so I'm going to get in here. OK, so you tell me, how do you think we did on the cook there? I think that cook looks really tender, really juicy. David, what do you think? It looks a little dry. You had to saw through it. Actually, a lot of it dry. <sighs> All right, so David, what am I to expect when I cut into your pork belly here? Uh, nice, crispy skin and a juicy interior. So, Tenoria, assess David's. Not as juicy as he expected. And juicier than hers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, the tailor man. It's undercooked. What was that, Turner? From my um, take on butternut squash and the beautiful velvety texture it should have in the middle, that's undercooked. Wow. This is a pork challenge, and it's all about the pork. And when I order pork belly, I'm sure the garnish is nice, but what I care about is the pork. Taking a look at this pork from the side, it just looks dry, almost like a dry pot roast. Neither of the pork bellies are perfect. They're both a little chewy. David's is a little bit more crispy on top, but David's veg is really undercooked. Tenoria's belly is a little more tender than David's. Next up, the double pork chop. Nice. Tenoria, how long would you cook the chop for? Maybe seven to eight minutes in right. the oven. Let's go inside. So I'm looking for a nice medium throughout. But with the raw fat on the back of the chop, I'm expecting the center to be undercooked. Okay. 
I hope it's not. That should be good. What do you think? I do get the sense of medium, and it's extremely juicy, Chef. Mm. Thank you. David, so we're missing the bok choy at such a critical moment. Why? There's no reason, no excuse other than just uh, being panicked with everything else going on. Pork. How's that cooked? Perfect mediums, Chef. So you say it's perfect? Yes, Chef. Because that can make the difference between joining Brandy and Sean in the finale or going home. Pork. How's that cooked? Perfect mediums, Chef. You confident it's cooked in the middle? Yes, Chef. Pork was cooked better in all three dishes. And this pressure test was about pork. David's sear on the pork is incredible. There's no exposed white fat, but it's cooked to perfection. Tenorio's pork shop does need a touch more cooking inside. Bok choy delicious, sauce delicious, all done beautifully. There's a lot of elements missing from David's plates, and I got every single one of them on there tonight. I excelled compared to David. David, Tenoria, we've come to a consensus, but that was a very tough decision. Christina, two well-executed pork tenderloin dishes. In your mind, which one had the edge? Tenoria, your pork tenderloin as an entire dish was more composed, more of the elements were there, but your pork was undercooked. David, your dish was less complete, but that pork tenderloin, you nailed. So your pork tenderloin got my vote. Thank you, Chef. Richard, which pork belly dish had the advantage? David, Tenoria, I mean, this one just came down to the tiniest of margins. The dish that I preferred was Tenoria's. So, that means it comes down to the double pork chop. Two well-executed dishes. And I can only go on what you give me, not what's been left behind on the bench. You both know that. The dish that had a slight edge and the final person in the MasterChef finale is David. Congratulations. You are now in the MasterChef finale. Just think of the ups and downs and what you've done in this competition. And now you've got one final cook-off. You up for it? I'm ready, chefs and get your ass upstairs quickly. So sorry. No, don't apologize. Oh, Tenoria, you know, you introduced me to quite possibly the best shrimp and grits I've ever eaten in my entire life. And no matter where I go, what restaurant we sat in, no one is ever going to come close to what you gave me. Thank you. Please go up here and say goodbye. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Thank you. Coming into this competition, I cooked American comfort food. That, for me, will go down in history as the best shrimp and grits. No way. I'm telling you now. Wow. But now I know how to play a restaurant quality dish with refinement and finesse and beauty. You've arrived. This is it. 
It's beautiful. Thank you. I've learned how to build even more flavor, which is something that I thought that I already had. I might actually take a few in my pocket for later. That's you so take good. as many as you want. There's some more on my station. You want those too? Blue team, congratulations! Congratulations, Blue team. Yes. I absolutely plan to pursue my food dream of feeding the homeless. Good job, Snorri. Love you, T. A lot of people spend their entire lives wondering what they're meant to do on Earth. I know now. Next week, it's the two-hour MasterChef finale. Joining us tonight, two of the biggest names in the culinary world. Daniel Balud and Wolfgang Puck. It's go big or go home. The world's biggest cooking competition comes to an end as David, Sean, and Brandy face off for a quarter of a million dollars, their own cookbook, and the MasterChef title. The winner of MasterChef is... One potato, two potato.